All right, guys, welcome back to another ADHD Insights video. Today, we are going to be discussing ADHD and relationships and how your ADHD could be affecting your relationships and what can we do to fix that? All right, let's have an honest chat here. How many times have you got into a relationship over the moon of emotions? You're excited, it's all new. And while with our ADHD, we know we love new things. So you think to yourself, this is the one and you get all carried away just to realize by next week that you don't really feel the same for them anymore. And it's followed by feelings of guilt and self-doubt of one how can this be? Last week I was so obsessed with them and now this week I don't really want to be with them. Or the opposite happens. Everything's going amazing for them to all of a sudden pull away and you have no clue what went wrong. Well today I'm hopefully going to answer these questions for you and provide you with some solutions that can hopefully fix this. So you see with ADHD we have so many good traits and while these traits can sometimes blend themselves well to relationship, you know, such as creativity, you know, we're very empathetic, we are loyal, we're definitely caring and we can very much hyper-focus on on shared goals and these traits do blend themselves very well to relationship let's take a look at the opposite traits of ADHD and how they can negatively impact our relationships you see these traits that come with ADHD that can sometimes negatively impact our relationships are traits such as we emotionally react to things we tend to get angry or upset very easily we tend to sometimes hyper focus on them too much at the detriment of our own purpose and growth we struggle to be present we get bored very easily and sometimes this can lead to impulsive decisions which sadly can be in forms such as cheating or micro cheating which can be messaging or flirting so there's no real like middle ground with ADHD in relationships what I tend to find personally and again this is all personal experience guys in my relationships I'm either giving it a hundred percent giving it my all and in that same relationship the next day I could be completely at the bottom not really being able to maintain a conversation or even give simple communications such as a message to how my day was or, or what I kind of got up to during that day I'll tend to ghost my partner or kind of get into the mood where I feel as if you know you may have not had your best day today and you weren't really showing much affection or emotion and you may feel maybe numb for your medication or you may feel as if there's so much going on in your mind and brain that you don't really have time to focus on your partner you don't really have time to focus on what's affecting them because you're so stressed and your ability to talk about it has kind of been damaged because you don't really want to just burden your partner I'm going to share a personal story about my relationships and how my ADHD impacted those relationships and kind of what I learn from it. So you see, obviously with my ADHD, I was undiagnosed for the first 20 odd years of my life. A lot of my experience in life was me kind of trying to figure it all out. And that's why I kind of want to share it with you guys. So you can understand that I didn't have all the answers. I was going through this, not even knowing I had ADHD. Obviously I suspected that, but I obviously was never sure. I never received my official diagnosis. During my relationships, my ADHD would pop up in very numerous ways. A lot of the ways it would pop up would be kind of overreacting to things. So let's just say, you know, we'd have an argument about something so small maybe about who did the dishes or who didn't do the bin or even something even as small as like you didn't walk the dog today would turn into a big argument and this was mainly because I felt almost personally attacked when being criticized and as we know of ADHD we very we find it very hard to receive criticism as we take things very personally and this led to a big overreaction a lot of the times from me where I would you know huff and puff and get quite upset within the situation and to my partner who was a non-ADHD person that is a very big overreaction action and can be quite a turn off. Another way of which my ADHD affected my relationships was my communication. I found it very hard to be present in conversations and very hard to listen when I had a lot of things going on in my brain. You know, I would get quite bored and I would be quite impulsive. I want to go do things that would require either spending a lot of money or putting my health at jeopardy. But the one thing I noticed that it would affect the most was kind of myself. And what I mean by that is when I would tend to hyper focus in these relationships, I would kind of forget about me. And and I know a lot of people with ADHD, especially you watching this video right now, can definitely relate to this. Let's say you've been in a relationship, you are dating someone, they become your whole world, your whole obsession. It's all you can think about. You go to sleep, you think about them, you wake up, you think about them. All you want to do is talk to that person and be with that person 24-7. And obviously a lot of normal people can relate to this feeling as well, especially in a new relationship. The thing with ADHD is we tend to really, really hyper-focus at the detriment of our own growth and progression. And this can be a very slippery slope as you tend to kind of just keep going down and down and down and before you realize that you've kind of hyper focused all your energy onto them you start to notice that shit where's my life gone where have my friends gone what am I doing like you kind of lose all your self growth and purpose that you had originally before getting into that relationship you know and I find that this would really damage a lot of my partners they would feel very suffocated in these relationships they would feel as if like person they'd met before who 
was showing all these signs of self-improvement, of growth, of fulfilling their purpose had suddenly disappeared in front of them. And for the person with ADHD, it can feel as if we're being rejected. And like we talked about with that rejection sensitive dysphoria, it can hit us quite hard. So when your partner has been honest to you about how you may be suffocating them, we don't take it the right way. We don't take it in a very productive way and can sometimes lash out at them or get quite upset and angry, which again can lead to a lot of problems in our relationship. So what are these solutions? How do we fix this? How can we take control of our ADHD so that our relationships are benefited by this? Well, one of my solutions, honestly guys, is to focus on yourself and your own goals. Don't get so hyper-focused and hyper-fixated on them. So you've got to remember, guys, when they first met you, you weren't all about them. You were doing your own thing. You were showing them signs of someone that could potentially be a good partner. And the reason we kind of lose this is because we get so obsessed with this person that we forget our responsibilities and kind of what attracted that person in the first place. So if before you were kind of not really messaging much or you'd message here and there, you were really kind of focused on your goals and your purpose, maybe it's the gym. Maybe you've been smashing out gym and you've been going to the gym all the time. You don't really go to the gym anymore because you want to go hang out with your girl or, you know, you don't see your friends as much because you don't want to go hang out with your girlfriend or, you know, you call in sick to a couple of shifts because, you know, you want to sleep in with your girlfriend. You know, who doesn't? But this all leads to traits that are unattractive to your partner. Life is all about balance. We know that. So I'm not saying to completely ignore them and just focus on yourself. I'm just saying you need to find that balance of where you focus on your own goals and your own ambitions as well as theirs. My solution number two is be honest about your ADHD diagnosis early. You see, this helps to weed out the ones who aren't really ready for a relationship like that. And it's just respectful. End of the day, guys, if you're going to be dating someone and bring them into your world, they need to be aware of any kind of disabilities or things that you deal with, as that's only fair to the person you're dating. And, and what I mean by that is, guys, if you jump into a relationship and you don't really let them know about your ADHD as you think that it won't affect them, you'll be very, very surprised on how your ADHD can affect other people. So it's very important that you do let them know this early. It also, like I said, helps to weed out the ones who aren't going to take you serious, the ones that were never really going to support you and your ADHD anyway. And being honest and being upfront with that communication, it just sets a real good tone for your relationship, especially if they do accept that about you. They will really appreciate the fact that you are so open and so honest, um, and that will really put your relationship foundation at a great start. So solution number three, guys, would be CBT therapy. CBT just stands for Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and it helps you to understand what that person is kind of showing with their body language versus what they are saying. As ADHD people kind of find it hard to pick up on that and just small little nuanced things that you may not pick up on that someone that is neurotypical would that could be affecting your relationship without you realizing. Solution number four guys, there's two books I'd highly recommend you guys read. The first book being The Way of the Superior Man by David Dada and the second book being Attached by Amir Levine. So Attached by Amir Levine, basically this book is all about attachment styles and kind of what attachment styles you are. There actually is three attachment styles. There is the secure, the anxious and the attached. This book helped me to really understand these attachment styles and from reading this book I found out that I was actually anxiously attached and from my research and from my readings I realized that a lot of ADHD people tend to relate to the anxious attachment style. So people with anxious attachment styles struggle to feel secure in their relationships. So yeah, basically your attachment styles are formed in childhood. And this book really explains that. And it's something I would really highly recommend to a lot of you people with ADHD to read. And it was a good indication for me to realize that I was anxiously attached to people. And that was the main reason why a lot of my relationships were failing. And then guys, again, another good book, like I said before, is The Way of the Superior Man by David Dada. For a man watching this video right now, this book would be of very good use to you. It helps to teach you about the femininity of a woman. And it helps to also teach you about the masculinity of a man and how we should be carrying ourselves and how we can create the best relationship possible. This book teaches a lot of stoicism and how to handle yourself effectively. You know, you need to find your purpose first. And I think a lot of people seek relationships to kind of fill that void. You know, they do it to, for the validation, they do it for the dopamine, and especially some of ADHD, we can often find ourselves jumping into one night stands or quick relationships just based on the impulse and the dopamine that we receive from that. You've also got to remember you're hurting someone's feelings. So you may feel bored and you may be seeking that dopamine going and jumping into bed with the next person or sleeping with the next person or even getting into a relationship with the next person you see eventually you're going to realize that you've hurt them just as much as you've hurt yourself so it's understanding that you can't just be going out here hurting people for the sake of dopamine and boredom again we cannot use that adhd as an excuse to not be a good person like i've spoke about in many videos before your adhd isn't an excuse it is an explanation for the way you behave but i really do hope you guys enjoyed today's video i hope you guys gave you some value i'm going to link the two books 
down below. So if you want to go download those for free, I'll leave them down below. But apart from that, guys, don't forget to smash the like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you on the next video.